Welcome to all of those in our Zion Global Village. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This is my kind of day, a beautiful fall, crisp day. I look forward to this season. And before I start, I want to thank you all for your quick response to our invitation of coming to our in-person worship this past Sunday. We had a great great time and of course thank you all for tuning in virtually and we're going to meet again this particular weekend and we'll just see how it goes you know this COVID thing just doesn't seem to want to go away and I just got word about a precious little child uh, Skylar who has COVID and um, the child is not even a year old and we're praying for her and all of her family and praying for your family don't let your guard down during this period let's let's stay vigilant during this period this weekend was um rather interesting i should say on monday i got a call from my nephew lorenzo jackson who is also our videographer and producer and he said that I had been flagged, or we had been flagged, I should say, by one of our social media platforms. Um, and the message was that the sermon that was preached on last Sunday was considered to be hate speech. So the warning came that if we continued in that vein, they would. <laughs> now, ain't this something? You know what? And I'm not going to stop. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> they said if we continued on in that vein, they would pull us down. And uh, I'm, I'm listening to him, and my immediate response was, you know what, that's good. And he said, yeah, it's, it's good. And I thought about Jesus' words to the disciples and a large audience as he gave the Beatitudes. He said, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. And so I thought, okay. Um, we knew as we were going into this particular message and many times I've said during the sermon, I need you all to pray because we were moving into some pretty deep waters. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know it is not my style. It's, it's not my, my modality at all to be mean and hateful in the messages. I hold the philosophy that Jesus doesn't tell us how bad we are, but what we need to do to become. Well, now, in light of this message, even now, I've decided that I need to remain on the ground of truth and not move on the slippery slope of attacking or bashing a social media because of their views. And I'm here and well in my mind and in my spirit, I need to tell you, I'm here and I'm well because Paul told us that these times were going to come. He said it 2,000 years ago that a time would come where people would have itching ears and not want to hear 
sound doctrine. That's in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. And so we are here. We're here in this time. Um, getting to this time has been pretty interesting. If you just to let me, just allow me to reflect a bit. Man, I remember third grade Bond Hill Elementary School where we used to have somewhat like a devotion and we would sing God bless America land that I love and now to think to go to many schools you have to go through a metal detector to, that senses whether you are armed with a gun or not. I remember a teacher by the name of Miss Patterson at Woodward High School who had enough confidence in myself and the late Paul Bean and also the late Adam, Alan Williams to pull together a choir for a black history assembly. And in that assembly, I chose to do a song by Larry Graham in the Graham Central Station, Release Yourself. And a young lady by the name of Joan, I wish I could remember Joan's last name, but Joan sang that song, y'all. And for those who can remember and were there that day, Todd O'Neill was a part of that crew as well. Todd is now a pastor of the Joy um, Christian Center here in, in Cincinnati. House of Joy Christian Center. Um, Todd was there and we witnessed the power of God actually coming down into that assembly. That was then and, and now that school, unfortunately, and my prayers are with the teachers and administration, um, the school faces violence and there have been shootings there. Times have really, really changed. I remember a time during the 70s, 80s, and 90s where there seemed to be a revival in the city, in the U.S., the world, where in some places you could hardly get a seat in, in the house of God. And now it appears if you read a particular scripture, uh, and in some nations, you're subject to be arrested, prosecuted, or now here to have that word taken down. It seems that freedom of religion has gone into a different vein where it can be interpreted as freedom from religion or a society that is free of God. If ever there was a time that we needed to pray, it is now. And again, I'm well because the Apostle Paul said these things would come where people would turn from the truth and they would turn then to fables. Even in this season, as we move forward and people have choice between truth and fables, it pains me, but the truth is many will embrace fables. That's challenging. Um, and yet Paul says in that same passage, uh, Shall I read it? Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, first verse. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's talking to his mentee, the young apprentice, Timothy. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearance and his kingdom. Preach the word. 
Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time, Timothy, will come. Well, they're going to come for you. <laughs> A time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, Timothy, be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. You know what caught my eye in this particular section by Paul was his admonition to endure afflictions. Afflictions from a worldly perspective can seem bad but yet God sends it for a divine purpose. And I believe, I believe that this word to us that, you know what? You better not say it again, <laughs> was for a purpose. It's, it's for a purpose to, to stir us up, uh, for us to take our position uh, to operate in an apostolic mode, to press younger pastors and, and teachers, to, to gird them up, to move forward and not back down. Um, some people would say, okay, pastor, what are you going to do now that you've gotten this warning? Well, some would say, you know, you just need to conform. You, you, what's the deal? <laughs> don't, don't jeopardize your ministry. And some might even say, you know, Pastor, you've been talking about retiring. This might be a good time. Just, just go on. Do your fishing. Just, you know, compromising, conforming kowtowing, that ain't in my blood. That's, that's, that's not who we are. I need you to know that when my ancestors were enslaved, I'm told that leaders of our families gathered folks together to pray when they were to be silent. And from that Churches in the South were born in our family name, Bell's Chapel, Nelson Chapel. It's, it's in my blood. And what more, I have the blood of Jesus running through my veins and in my bones. You know, what's in me is like fire shut up in my bones. I can't be silent. I, I won't back down. So... I realize that this affliction, this torment, persecution has come and it's all right. And for that, I want to give encouragement to the body of Christ right now that you would continue on. There's young Andre O'Neill of the Rock Life Church. And I want to encourage you. I see you, brother. There's Gerard Selden of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Dayton, Gary Hales of, of Tabernacle Word Church that I'm really fond of, Michael Pearl, Darnell Lee, so many, many young guys that are, that are in this now. And I want to encourage you all to continue to be strong in this word. So the first thing I would say to you, to all of us, is to be watchful. Paul said perilous times would come. And so this is no time for us to get up from our knees. This is no time for us to go to sleep. The enemy is busy. He's moving. He's moving. 
and he's trying to catch off guard those who are not vigilant, uh, that he can sway them by every wind and doctrine. And if there ever was a time that you needed to gird your people up in the word of God so that they can defend the faith, it is now. So be watchful. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is be about doing the work. Even though it's uh, a difficult time, Mother Teresa has a poem that basically says, do it anyway. <laughs> um, when you're threatened uh, to be silenced, preach anyway, teach anyway, pray anyway, envision anyway, build anyway, reach anyway, do the work. And finally, Paul says, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Uh, Jesus says that he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill, to fulfill, to fulfill. And that basically means he didn't seek to abolish not one word of the commandment that God gave, but he poured himself into it uh, to fulfill, uh, to bring the word out to its fullness. And that's what I want to encourage you to do during these difficult and troubled times that you would immerse yourself in studying the word of God. And I know that there are revisionists that have come on the scene who have many believing that God somewhere in time has upgraded the scriptures <laughs> to be relevant to our times. No, no. The word is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And you stand on the truth. Preach it fully. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in you even when you don't feel like it. Preach the word fully. Yeah, and preach it in season and out of season. And I'll tell you, <laughs> this is a time where the word seems to be out of season. Yeah. The ship of Zion, if you will, is going through a fog right now. And it may seem that there is nothing on the other side, but this is what you do. You keep steady, you keep focused, you keep going through and you'll begin to see light on the other side. I'm well, I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> As an old Negro spiritual that says, I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back. I will go, I shall go to see what the end is gonna be. And you stay in there with me. Shalom. The sun.